yeah. and mostly breathing yeah. <laughs> and trying to keep my hands steady. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm just putting on the first layer of dots um, and working out the spacing. So I don't do it mathematically. I do it by eye. I've put on three, four coats of the base color. The first two layers were diluted, just a kind of a wash. And then I just put on two solid layers um, of color just to get kind of a really vibrant background base. And then I'm just doing the darker color. So I'm going to be doing this kind of midnight blue and an indigo blue smaller dot inside. So I'll get some of it done and get some of the first, second layer on as well. So that's me. We'll let you get cracked. So ask any questions you like, and I'll try and answer. Yeah. It, lo it looks as if we're going to have two painters today. Two painters. It? So, um, and, and using lots of brushes. Would you like to say what you're doing here now? Yes, I decorate today this piece. Like I mentioned, people who knows what I do, big part of my work, uh, it's uh, decoration. So be silly to skip this part. Even sculptural, it's really kind of important part. There's been like a canvas, and right now I try to decorate. And I'm using stains, uh, it's a color stain. So right now, same work what I make yesterday, I finished last night, left uh, dry, so it's right now dry. I start a little bit painting something boring stuff, what you uh, probably know how everybody painting, you know, houses and da, 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 da. The general. And I left all this fun part for you. Yeah. So this is on dry. Clay. It's yes, not, uh, not clay. basically fired or anything like that. Just yeah, and a lot of people ask actually before, after they're dry, uh, I'm using um, uh, drywall sandpaper, so I'm able to sand it and make it much more clean and smooth if I need that. So it's usually be nice to have a mask, dusty, but it works very well. And more smoother surface I have, that's better be easier be apply paint later. Mm -hmm. You're possible painting same technique on a bisque or on a green. So right now, no choice. So you could put this on bisque or green. You yeah. do it both ways. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask how many came to... I'll get you in a second. Can I ask how many uh, people came to Sergei's demonstration yesterday? Fantastic. So do you recognize that's the form he built yesterday? <laughs> Gronya did not make this yesterday, just to clarify. <laughs> I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> Only because it needs to be bisque fired first for me. Um, I do a lot of sanding and finishing off after the bisque firing um, with the Abernet. These, a lot of you that came out to the, the workstation saw me using these. So, um, yeah, I use them to kind of get a clean surface and wash the piece off before I start putting the color on just to make sure there's no dust. And yeah, then I kind of spritz the surface before I start putting the first layer of color on. Uh, I've got a question up the back and then I'll come to you. Yeah. Uh, Sergey, what, uh, Sergei, what is the medium that you use with the stains? Do you use a medium other than water with the stains? Do you... Yes, uh, this is Mason Stain Commercial. You're able to make yourself stains too. It's not difficult, but this is sort of reliable. Same condition, same color. If I'm making myself, it's all the time be a little bit changes. And um, uh, do you add do you add a, a like a painting medium to any of your colors, or do you? Do you no, just buy? straight. But it's nice to uh, simply buying like this and uh, easy to using plates. For you mixing, I never actually using straight from box container. Usually I have small containers where I mix it right condition. And if I have like a kind of tool would give me a couple drops, you know, like sometimes I need to watering down like what perfectly works, like what I think be working well. <laughs> so these are the velvet rewards that Amico make. Yeah. Uh, and like Gornia, you, you're doing the same. So she using the same. Are you using, do you use a yeah. medium grinder? Are you using the same? I use the Amoco uh, velvets and I kind of dilute them a little bit depending on what stage I'm using them at. These, I just put them in these little porcelain pots so, uh, and I add little drops of water as they dry out. Okay. So just to keep the kind of the same consistency with the dots. So 
Um, if they're too watery, they can run, and then you've got a lot of work to do. So, okay. and I just kind of load the very tip of the brush. So a lot of people ask me, did I use a kind of a slip trailer to do the dots? But it puts on too much color. And sometimes if it's too thick, it can just lift off in the firing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so. Mm. And we have a question here and a question over there. So this one first. No, I am. Um, I'll repeat the question if that's all right. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Is that, yeah, yeah, that's it. So uh, having shown us how the shapes you made yesterday, and now you've made this oval shape, and obviously yesterday's were round, have you cut and altered the thrown round shapes, or have you used moulds to make the, this piece? No, I didn't cut the, the round shapes. So I, I, had, I actually have an oval mould, so I had started one yesterday, but I just didn't get to finish it with all the talking I was doing. <laughs> so um, I have an oval mould that I made myself, very like the circular mould, and I just start off with a slab inside, and I make the recess first, and put that into, that's the first thing that goes into the mould, and once that's positioned, I'll cut an opening in the slab, and lay that over it, and blend it, and when it's dried out a bit, I can turn that over and blend the, the join on the other side. If you're the open, you're just yeah, yes, yeah, so I work upside down, a bit like Thomas. <laughs> a bit like Thomas, yes. And we have another question, the lady in the pink. What was the name of the uh, material you used to smooth down in your surface? I think one of them, the finer one, is called Abernet, the same as Sergei uses, I think. That's a fine one. And this one, I actually have the name on, of, on my phone. So if you want to come up to me afterwards and get it from me. I Don't just can't that. remember it at the, top, at the moment. They get different grades of these, and I use this one uh, the kind of coarser one, um, when I've, the pieces are bone dry before they go into the bisque firing. Um, and you can cut them to any size, it comes on a roll, and you can just wash them out, you know, and you can they get much more life out of them than sandpaper. So, and they kind of fit your hand when you're doing, working on big forms. So I find it really useful. Okay. Was that a hangover, did you say? Okay. So we're having a repeat question due to a hangover, which I always think is a good a sign of a good festival. Um, when you're painting the pigments on and then you mask out areas to paint other pigments, do you fire? Um, do you do multiple firings to stop any smudging between the colors? Um, not really get at the question straight, but... This Emeka, you can't smudge. They're really actually tight. Uh, but you possible multiple times uh, fired uh, bisque. So I'm using a lot wax resist. If you notice just a second ago, I using wax resist put an eye. So later, like a painting around, I be still uh, protected so paint not go on. And if you noticed, uh, uh, well, not noticed. You probably don't notice, but... I put already wax resist on the many places, so to kind of skip uh, to you to see just regular paint. But it's already been on some surfaces uh, uh, wax resist. And mm, so to make sure i able to glaze it later, I need to fire it once. And later, if I need to painting and using wax resist again, I need to maybe fire it again, a bisque. So it's possible to do multiple firing. I'm really frugal. Less, I better. You know? But if need to be a quality, I not care how many kilns I fired. So I, I like it 
to be on a risk on the edge. So right now, if you, I don't know if you see in the camera, I painting, and this paint not go on the eye, and I've been pretty free, freely, you know, painting over, but this wax resist protect. It just help. It's a little bit need to calculate what you, where you put wax resist because after you put it's already you stuck with this. But um, if you know what you're doing, it's pretty easy. So using this brush called grinder, so it looks like with one stroke, it looks like you have one, two, three, four, five, like 10 stro strokes right away. So it looks like I make, you know, little shadow. And I possible to build this way a thicker and thicker, like paint, like more and more paint. I already done this in the feet here a little bit. So more and more you paint, kind of darker get. And on the plates, I'm watering down so much, but every time added more and more. So I want to create more depthness or more um, illusion. This <clears throat> uh, underglaze is really good, but if you cover everything, it looks so flat. I don't like flat. I want kind of depthness. So I create all this little technique how you're able to instruct this uh, depthness if you're painting uh, one color on the other, so maybe enrich or shiny or matte. Same paint you possible left without glaze, transparent glaze, or, or with transparent glaze. So you have like two colors already. It depends. You put watery or you put like thick. You have together like four from one color, you're already able to have four different um, uh, tones or nu uh, nuances. Mm -hmm. You find here? these colors are intermixable? Yes. Yeah. This is like you possible painting like acrylic or watercolor, but it's still like on goops, so it's a color clay. And we have one question. Ah, so the question is, when you're painting, you're leaning on the surface that you've done, does it not smudge? No, no. The, the great thing about these is that they dry in really quickly and you can handle them, but I find it's important that your hands and my arms are clean, there's no hand cream or anything like that or soap on them because that can create a resist. And I would, when I'm normally I'm working, I'd wash my hands quite often just in case there's oil or anything that and it naturally occurs. Yeah, so soaked up into the bisque, isn't it? Yeah. It's like this session's been sponsored by Amoco underglazes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we all know what we'll be buying. <laughs> so how much can you dilute the underglazes before they run? I don't know, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to explain because it's, it's a consistency that's kind of in, in front of me. That's why I just mix up a little at a time. Um, so, it's yeah. to do with the porosity of the object yeah, that's going on. Yeah, I don't want to get, I've only added like maybe a couple of drops of color. So I just, I've really put a very tiny bit of color in there and I just loosen it up. I don't want it going on too thick. So it's just finding that right balance and it's really just trial and error. You know, I want it to be a nice solid dot of color, but I don't want it to, to run or to be too thick. So yeah, it's just practice really. They're very similar to the poster paints you had as a kid. Yeah. You know, they have that kind of chalkiness, it's so they don't move like acrylic. Yeah. <gasps> you can mix them, yeah. And they, oh. seem, they, they seem to hold their place in any temperature. Yeah. And we have a question. And so this is a question for both of you about the fact that you're both using the same decorative materials. What are your firing ranges? Um, I fire between kind of 1140 and 1160. Uh, depending on the colors. Uh, some of them, I find some of the blues go a bit shiny on me, which I don't like. So it's, yeah, it depends on your kiln and, you know, finding out what your, 
how you're killing fires as well, but that's what I do. And I fire the pieces on um, a bed of thin bed of ceramic fiber with a kind of a dusting of light sand on them, which just brushes off after the firing. Yeah, I fired uh, this clay. Usually, I uh, mostly I use it uh, high fire. It's a uh, tin contain my clay, but depends if work looks really fragile and I see to be deformation, I fired a little bit lower, con eight. But if, like for example, this prill is stable, I fired con 10. So I like it, con 10 give more, uh, more, looks more mm, tighter, yes. yeah. <laughs> and I like how they're smooth later after firing too. Um, so this. So quite a range then going from 11.40 to cone 10. With the, with the same material. With the same material. Yeah. Yeah, you actually able to, with this emica, even if I leave all this in a, a plate and put in a kiln, all this burn it, and this is already able to uh, low fire uh, firing, you're already able to this clay not, oh, colors not wash it off. So you even able to using Amico after everything being glazed and go high fire, again painting and fire it low and works. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a new discovery. Mm -hmm. And somebody told me in a conference like this, it's like, are you trying? No, and let I try, it's like, whoa. <laughs> because a lot of times after you finished uh, work, you see like some part where we, you would like to make more straight. So I, right now I painting and put again in the kiln on low fire, no risk. Do you, do you fire, do you have a very small kiln so you can fire these individually or do you try to get a group of them together for each firing yeah, I have and one, refiring? Two, it seems difficult. Three, four, five. I have five kilns and all different size. Eh? 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 Yeah, so, uh, 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 <laughs> it's, uh, and I, I not wait to make a couple pieces. I'm, like I say, I'm trying to be really conservative or frugal, but I actually fired on one piece in the kiln. Um, I, I need to see it, uh, how it looks like, because after I see, I know what my next work be. <laughs> Uh, so, it's America, you know, that spoiled me. <laughs> it's a very technical term, isn't it? Uh, 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 uh. Right, that's a, it's the easiest way to communicate. Any country works. <clears throat> Sign. And this is what we do in art. We kind of, you know, communicate through signs. Sign, signs? So right now I'm painting this uh, um, skin. They have like a color called um, Avery Beige. So it's like slightly yellow, like really looks like skin color. Perfect, you know. And so this means like you're able to using brown, make a little bit uh, uh, shadows, and you're able to using white to even have more uh, um, form, like more announced form. So it's really handy. But in this case, really important, their kind of communication, sort of. So I try to kind of focusing on their directions of eye. And so for example, this is work without painting. That's kind of cool, but you know, like, if you're painting, it's been suddenly be totally uh, different. If you're painting eyes and shadows and be like really different uh, forms. So I think this painting is really bringing a lot. Okay. So I finished this uh, hat, kind of finished. Really, if I'm in the studio, I'd be more precise. Do, 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 like using all these brushes, stones, so all the uh, nuances. But right now, I think for 
this type of work okay. quite transformed from the piece we saw on stage yesterday, isn't it? And raw clay. I already put wax resist on this red part of this body, so I'm not afraid to painting somewhere or mix it up. Can I ask you, Gronja, how long you would spend decorating a piece of this size? Well, I usually kind of do an hour at a time and then I get up and walk around. <laughs> you walk around, make a cup yeah. of tea. Yeah, and I have kind of, you know, I have various heights of bins and things on wheels, so this, this angle is a bit, normally I'd have it a bit higher yeah. for this beginning. Um, but yeah, uh, possibly it could take me maybe four or five hours, maybe longer to do the whole thing. Yeah. And you do know. you have a favorite part of the process from beginning to end? Is this? I like doing the last dot. The last? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of go, yes. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do curse myself a lot, but And anyway. you don't map any of it out, you do it all just by eye. Yeah. So it's just... It is just practice and just, yeah, taking your time. And it, it is a bit meditative. I mean, I listen to a lot of stuff on the radio and podcasts and things while I'm working, and you can kind of zone out, but you're concentrating as well. And if, if you've had a chance to see Gronje's work in the exhibition, it's, it's quite extraordinary if you've seen mm. it any, anywhere. Um, but it really does kind of float and move your eyes. Uh, you know, it does a kind of extraordinary things. And I'm just wondering, have you... Have you studied sort of visual phenomenon in any way to kind of enable that to happen? Have you got an understanding of what you're doing with the color and the form in a, in a less empirical way, I suppose? Or no, I mean I haven't. I mean, and I probably <laughs> should look into it. No, you're but doing it's, it. But it's it's kind well. of intuitive, and I'm just going by what I like and what interests me color-wise, and how it reacts when you combine the two, whether it's contrast and color and how it floats that top color. So yeah, it is more instinctive than, you know, I haven't looked into the kind of the color theory behind mm -hmm. behind it really. And I just have, yeah, I kind of go with my gut about what I like and what I'm trying to achieve. But um, I like that they kind of look like a texture and they look soft and that it, the color moves. And then sometimes I just do different tones of one color on them, which can be different again. It gives a different feeling. So. Yeah, but some people do react quite badly to them. But that, I think that is a medical thing. They can't do dots at all. They can't so. do dots, so they can't do those colors close yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I even noticed it this morning. Warnings. <laughs> it should come with health warnings, yeah. Um, the piece inside this morning against the gray wall, I could see that the, the dots were kind of moving around the edge. Yeah, so, but that was maybe after last I, night. I'd hang over. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. Oh, we have a question, sorry. Oh, sorry, that's it's up behind you and then I'll come down to you, sorry. How do you know how many dots exist in the circle? I don't. What, do you ever get to the end and go, oh, bugger? Is there like too big a gap or too small a gap? I know, I'm just doing it by my eyes, so, yeah. I mean, sometimes you make the dot, if, it look, if the space looks a little bit too big, you just make the little dot a little bit bigger. Um, certainly when I'm coming up out of the, the curve, I have to start kind of stretching the direction of the dot, so it's just where I place it and then... I stretch it a little bit. And I was saying to Ingrid the other day, I've noticed that I have a kind of a, almost like a tick, a little movement I do at that stage. And I'm kind of doing a little gesture in the air before I commit to where the dot goes. So yeah, 
Your brain must have it mapped out because I can be absolutely sure if I it's like cutting a cake. I get to the end and there's a huge slice or a tiny slice. Yeah. So you must have I think it, it is just out. the practice, you know. It's I've done it so often and I literally at this here now I've come out of six weeks of decorating. So it was really nice to get back to making again. <laughs> What I'm impressed with here as much as anything is the steady hand and the, how much uh, color your brush holds. Do you uh, have any secrets with your, with your brushwork? Uh, yeah, it's a nice long brush. Um, and this is what, it's still like I say, I never use a chrome container, but I noticed the best way to using containers, it's like from tea balls from uh, Japan, kind of. They have looks like a locust uh, thing, so you're possible to put like a brush. That's probably for chapsticks. But every time in the second hand I see it, I buy it. So this means you don't need to see uh, how, where, where your uh, lid. Um, We have a question. Uh, can the do oh yeah. So people are fascinated by your dots here now, Grania. If your dot is a, if you put a dot in the wrong place, can it be rectified? And would it not be easier for starting from the bottom of the in insert up? Other than the inside, down. yeah, um, yeah, I can rectify it. I usually I will let it dry a little bit, and then I take it off very carefully with the scalpel blade, and then just redo the orange and redo the dot. So that's how I fix it. And starting from the bottom up as opposed to the top down. I find it easier. It's it's I get a better overall. On the concavity. Placing of the dots, if I start from a soft edge and work my way down, getting smaller and smaller, and then these will kind of increase in slightly in size as I cover the, the front surface. Uh, we have three questions, so I'm going to go with this. Uh, uh, there's one behind you there. Yep. Oh, she said, had the same, same hard question as I. So, yeah. Yep. Lovely. Uh, Sergey, the question is, and you may have answered it, um, do you apply a glaze on this? And if you do, what temperature is it? Yes, uh, usually transparent glaze, but sometimes different glaze too. Uh, high fire, yeah. And I apply with brush, it's easy. I use ink a lot wax resist too to make sure their glaze only be in this place where I want it. I not put my piece all shiny because it's sometimes shiny made a little bit not so depth, like two reflections. So for example, here, I probably glaze it this inside, this red part, maybe his face and feet, and maybe cat eyes, and that's it. And so all this, I put wax resist around where I wanted to put glaze after bisque and let her glaze it, brush on uh, glaze, transparent glaze. Maybe, so, uh, yeah. do you ever spray or, or use an airbrush to get those delicate colors? Uh, no, this, I, I like it low maintenance <laughs> brush so much easier. Um, in the school, um, a lot of people ask, what do you learn from school? And I remember I learned from school all this uh, funny things. Like I learned from school, better don't touch a uh, sp spray brush. There's so much cleaning and so much maintenance. Uh, <laughs> you can do it, but it's easy to just learn how to be, you know, straightforward, have, have strong hand, or like you say. Um, so, um, uh, 
Well, same like I done in face with brown. If you saw my work in exhibition, there were these uh, um, uh, uh, faces, small faces, but with shadows. I made same things with black stains. So you're able to be like really uh, specific and really uh, subtle uh, changes too. So you possible this uh, all these colors water down and make use them like a watercolor. Do you, do you know we're running out of time? Uh, yes, yeah, you know so if you might not have been aware that this demonstration is timetabled for half an hour rather than 45 minutes. I didn't, I did, I didn't did realize that. Did you think that. it was 45 minutes? Yeah. Did anybody think it was half an hour? <laughs> Neither did we. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, so we just need to check how we're doing for time. Um, uh, how you know, are we doing for time? Is that a... I, is that a hang on. I, never, I never thought I could have such a wonderful half it's hour watching... It's 18 minutes past work. I know, this is a half an hour That's demonstration. Done. Okay. Yeah. I was just um, thinking, I, I've never had such a wonderful half hour watching paint dry. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, it's so beautiful. <laughs> such a beautiful thing. I told to you it would be riveting. Um, <laughs> We'll just check, because uh, we have the closing ceremony to prepare for, and everybody needs to be here at half past four. Okay, unfortunately, we have to close it at that today, because we do have to get ready for the closing ceremony. But I would like to thank our wonderful demonstrators. <laughs> thank you. Amazing. Uh, we will be having the closing ceremony in about 10 minutes, but I do have to embarrass two people in the audience because they're sat right in front of me. They're still and, in uh, Because Aberystwyth International Ceramics Festival brings together all sorts of unions, and I'd like to wish a happy anniversary to John and Andre, who met here 32 years ago. <laughs> and, yeah. And were robbed, robbed of their 30th anniversary because of COVID, we didn't have one. So it's their 32nd anniversary back here at Aberystwyth. So how wonderful is that? So thank you, everybody. We will see you hopefully for the closing ceremony.